How's it going everybody? Welcome back. So today I want to talk about oil consumption in Subarus and the reason why Subarus suffer oil consumption. Now if you've been around um, any forums or Facebook groups regarding Subarus, you know that a common topic of discussion is what is oil consumption and what is too much, what causes it, and how can I prevent it. So it's no surprise that um, since 2014, and even some of them before then, the new FA motors and the FB motors that are found in the Outback and Forester Legacy, and also the FA motors found in the BRZ and the WRX, they suffer from oil consumption. And there's a pretty easy explanation for it and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you on one of the motors um, how this actually happens and the reason is um, the oil rings on the engine so um, the oil rings actually scrape the cylinder wall from the oil that builds up on the cylinder wall as the piston goes up so at, over time and when you use low quality oil or don't um, do the manufacturer recommended oil change intervals, you get uh, the oil rings that actually will stick in the uh, piston and they won't retract and, and, and move outwards as the piston goes down into the bore. So what that does is it allows the oil to collect and build up on the cylinder and as it goes back up, the piston rings grab that oil as it goes back up and it burns it as part of the combustion process. Now the problem with that is if you're basically lowering the octane of your fuel when you're running um, oil within the cylinders. And you're also uh, causing it to burn lean um, because it's not a complete burn. Oil shouldn't burn um, or combust. and um, it's causing engine knocking as well, which can cause um, cylinder cracking or can cause piston damage if, if it's too bad. So I have a older EJ motor that came out of a 2006 Legacy that we're going to pull the pistons out of. It was suffering um, massive oil consumption issues. Uh, we're talking that it was consuming about, an, uh, about a quart of oil every three to 500 miles. So about a tank full of gas it was consuming about a quart of oil. So we're going to show you, I'm going to pull this engine apart and I'm going to show you what it actually looks like inside. All right, so this is an EJ253 out of a 2006 Subaru Legacy. And uh, this is the one I was saying, it consumed about a quart of oil every uh, three to 500 miles. Now, normally Subaru engines um, will consume oil about a quart every Ten to 12,000 miles, which is what the manufacturer determines as um, spec. So um, you can already see in this cylinder here um, that there is a lot of carbon buildup and there's a lot of uh, flakiness on this, um, sil on this piston here. And you can actually see on my finger there, that's carbon buildup from incomplete burn of fuel. We just had this engine apart three months ago at the most. Um, and... These pistons were all cleaned. Everything was looking like brand new inside the cylinder bore. Um, we had it for um, a head gasket issue, and we thought that the oil consumption was due to the valve stem seals. And so we replaced the valve stem seals. We cleaned up the engine here. Um, we didn't think about the um, piston rings on here and we put it all back together and we were still getting oil consumption on a massive scale and um, we were getting blue smoke out of the tailpipe still. So, pull this engine back apart and I'm gonna turn the cylinder here and show you the uh, piston. All right, you can see on this one here, this one's not too bad. So there's a little bit of carbon buildup on the piston itself. Um, it is pretty oily on here, and um, you can see on my finger that that's uh, pretty oily. So 
Um, this one's not terrible, um, but if we keep turning it, then we take a look at this guy here. This one is just completely covered in carbon buildup. And it's oily carbon buildup too. I mean, I pull away the pieces of carbon and you see oil just sitting on the piston itself. So we're gonna pull um, both sides here and I'm going to show you what the piston rings look like. All right, first things first, in order to pull the pistons out of it, I need to remove this pulley here first. Remove that plug. All right. Now on this plug, there's also this uh, metal seal here. I'm pull off. All right. Metal seal which we're gonna use some uh, RTV to reseal that plug when we're done. Now, inside here, you can see, there's the retainer clip for this front piston here. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that retainer clip and I'm going to pull the wrist pin out of the, out of the hole here, so. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab this and pull that out. All right, so I pulled the retainer for the wrist pin on the front out. To get to the back piston, we have to take off the oil separator plate here. Now, if these have already been replaced, they're going to have 4 millimeter hex bolts. Um, if they haven't been replaced yet, they're going to have a Phillips type on the back. And the Phillips type is more of a pain because it's recommended that you have a impact screwdriver that is that you basically put on the screw and you whack it with a hammer and it causes enough force to basically bust it free. So this has six hex bolts on it. So we've already replaced the separator plate on this engine with the new updated metal one. If you guys have a engine that has a plastic one, replace it. I can't tell you how many times that I've seen the plastic ones. People don't want to spend the 35 bucks to replace the plastic one with the metal updated one. And within months, it starts leaking. Also, while you have the engine out, replace the rear main seal, even if it doesn't look bad. These are one of those things that it's not if they go bad, it's when they go bad. So these new covers have a uh, tab on them that you can grab it and we'll clean that up later. But there's the other plug on the back there. All right, so now, there we go. That one's free. This one, same thing as the front. It's gonna come off with this plug and then there's a washer on there. So we're gonna pull out the retainer on there and pull these wrist pins out. All right, so out of the moment of truth, we gotta pull the wrist pin out of there. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you guys a trick here because I don't know if you guys have checked how much Subaru wants for a wrist pin puller for the EJ motor, but yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna put it up on the screen here. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. So, I have a very long screwdriver that I paid oh, about 15 bucks for two of them. And I'm going to go through the back of the front of the engine 
and I'm going to push this pin out to the back. And you can actually see it. There we go. I can see it here. Now, I can actually push this screwdriver all the way through out. And you'll see here it's out. So what I'm doing is I'm going through the front hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the head of the screwdriver on the edge of the wrist pin. I'm going to give it a good whack. There you go. It's starting to come out. There we go. Wrist pin out. All right, now time to get that back piston out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to going to turn the crankshaft until this piston goes top dead center. Now you'll see it can't go any further out in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one top dead center. What I'm going to do is now I can rotate this piston in the bore. I'm going to rotate it about 90 degrees. There it is. Now it pops right out of the bore. And there's my piston. So, you can see here, there's the oil ring. And you see all the oil on the outside of that there. Now, you can see right inside, this is all gummed up in here. This ring should spin. I should be able to spin this ring freely, and that does not move. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go in and get a pick, and I can't even... There's a separator between that oil ring right there, and I cannot even move that. Where you see as the top two rings here, you can move these freely. This will not move at all. So we're going to get a pick to try to extract that oil ring out of the bore. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to repeat the process in this side here. We're going to make sure this one is bottom dead center, which it is. I'm going to move the camera and we'll see this wrist pin. There it is. that out. And we're going to repeat the piston trick here. Top dead center. And we're going to bring this cylinder top dead center. I'm going to turn this piston 90 degrees, push it back in the bore, and Reverse the crankshaft, and there she is. So, yeah, you can see right there, that's another one that's stuck in there. And that oil ring will not move. There's the seam, the gap. Oh, there we go. That took some force to get that oil ring to move. So, again, that's stuck. That middle baffle here also is stuck as well. Whereas the top two, they move just fine in there. So, we're going to clean these up and uh, get some new rings and uh, should be running like new again. We'll get some new ones on here and it'll go back in the car and should be good to go. If you guys got any questions? Um, Put them in the uh, comment section and I will make sure to answer them to the best of my ability. And we'll see you next time.